Welcome to the updated all-in-one session guidebook. At the end of this video, you'll know everything that there is to know about using session. We're also going to timestamp each individual tutorial so that they're easy to find if you're looking for something specific. If you're new to Session, the app might not work exactly how you expect it to. The things that make Session complicated also make it a very powerful secure messaging app. So stick with me and you'll become an expert in no time. The first time you open the app, you'll be greeted with two options. Create an account or I have an account. Let's create an account. Next, you'll be prompted to create a display name. This isn't used for contact discovery and doesn't have to be unique but it is how you will show up in your friend's contact list. After you've selected a display name, you will be prompted with two more options, fast mode, which we recommend, or slow mode. If you select fast mode, depending on your device, you will be served push notifications from either Apple or Google's push notification service. If you would prefer not to interact with Apple or Google's push notification servers, you can select slow mode. When running session in slow mode, the app will occasionally do background polling for new notifications. This means that you may not receive a notification as soon as you receive a new message. We're gonna continue in fast mode. Congratulations and welcome to session. You just successfully created a new account and it really is as quick and easy as that. You'll now be prompted to save your recovery password, which is a very important part of creating a session account. Let's press continue. Your recovery password is used to restore your account if you lose access to your device or to link your account to an additional device. You should never ever share your recovery password with another person. If someone did gain access to your recovery password, they will be able to restore your account onto their own device. We recommend that you copy your recovery password and store it in a safe place, either online or offline. It's also possible to view your recovery phrase as a QR code in order to easily link devices. For an added layer of security, it's possible to permanently hide your recovery password for this account. This means that even if someone accesses your account on this device, they will not be able to access your recovery password. As well as generating a recovery password, creating a session account also generates an account ID. Think of it as a better and more secure phone number that you can use to connect with other people on session. You can also tap the QR code symbol on the top right hand side to display your account ID as a QR code, which is super handy for connecting with people in person. The account ID is randomly generated, totally anonymous and not linked to you in any way. Let's head back to the conversation screen now and start our first conversation. Tap the plus at the bottom of the screen and then select new message. From here, you can paste an account ID or you can scan a QR code. I'm gonna scan the QR code. I'm gonna say g'day to my buddy, Tom. The message will arrive in his message requests folder. Once he's accepted it, it will appear in his regular conversation screen. We've now successfully started a conversation and Tom has been added to my contacts. Next, let's create a group. Tap the plus at the bottom of the conversation screen. This time, select create group. Set a name for your group. And select the group participants. Then click create at the bottom of the screen. We've now created our first group. Groups are capable of hosting up to 100 people and are end-to-end -end encrypted by default. If you want to create a space that can host more than 100 people, you can create a community. Communities are large public channels where session users can congregate to discuss anything that they want. To join a community, you'll first need to acquire the community URL. There are some third-party sites that aggregate session communities that you can join, but none of them are run or endorsed by session. I'm going to join the official session community by tapping the plus at the bottom of the conversation screen tapping join community and then entering the session community URL. We've now covered the three main ways that you can chat to people on session. Let's go over some of the various settings in the app so that we can set things up just how I want it. If I tap my profile picture in the top left corner, it'll open the settings menu. 
Your account ID can be found here, along with a great deal of settings to customize session. I can tap my display name to edit it. I can also tap my display picture and select a new one. At the bottom of the page, you'll see various subgroups of settings. You'll see a unique option at the top of the list called Path. This is actually not a setting, but it does have some very neat information. The Path view visualizes the route that your messages are taking through Session's decentralized network. If you're not aware, Session has a decentralized infrastructure, which means that there are no central servers. All of Session servers are operated by community members all around the world. This offers a greatly heightened level of privacy. Let's head back to the settings menu. Beneath the path option are the privacy settings. Let's enter the privacy settings now. A lot of these features are standard functionality in a lot of messaging apps, but we've decided to make many of them opt in in the interest of protecting people's privacy. At the top, we have lock app. This option allows you to keep session locked with your biometrics or your password. Essentially, however you unlock your phone will be mirrored here. Community message requests give the option for people who are in the same communities as you to send you a message request. This option is off by default, so if you want community members to be able to message you, you'll have to toggle it on. Read receipts are pretty standard for a messaging app. If you switch them on, you'll send a read receipt whenever you open a message that you've received. This will appear as a small tick under the message on your contact's phone. You won't receive read receipts from them unless they also have turned the setting on. If switched on, typing indicators will show a set of ellipses on your contact's phone when you begin typing a message. Much like read receipts, you won't see these from your contacts unless they switch it on themselves. Link previews are the small previews of information that you might get when someone sends you a link in a messaging app. Usually, they'll show a thumbnail and a small snippet of text about what can be found on the linked page. Most messaging apps have link previews enabled by default, but on session, they're off by default. The reason for this is that link previews will generally expose your IP address to the linked site as it gathers the information for the preview. So to keep everything as private as possible, we've turned them off. Let's skip over voice and video calls right now, but we'll come back to that later. Let's head back to the main settings page. It's time to check out our notification settings. This section gives you control over the type of notifications that you want Session to provide. The first option is a toggle for fast mode notifications. You would have selected which notification method you prefer when creating or linking your account ID. But you can also change it from here at any time. Below this, you're able to customize your notifications. You can change the sound, and you can decide if you want notifications to make a sound when the app is already open. Below this, you have the option to decide what kind of information is included in the notifications that show up on your device. Let's head back to the main settings screen. Let's select conversation settings. In the conversation settings, you have the option to trim communities, autoplay audio messages, or review your blocked contacts and unblock people if you've decided that you like them again. Let's head back to the main settings page. Let's select appearance. Session has several themes which can all be customized. You can select from classic dark, classic light, ocean dark, and ocean light. The primary color in all of these themes can be changed by selecting a different color from the bottom of the screen. The appearance menu also gives you the option to tell Session to match your device's light or dark mode settings. Let's head into the recovery password menu. We've already run through recovery passwords, how to manage them, and what they're used for. Let's run through account deletion and restoration. First, I'll copy my recovery password. Then I'll head back to the main settings menu. At the bottom of the settings menu, there's a red option which reads clear data. Let's press this now. Once pressed, you'll be presented with two different options, clear device only or clear device and network. Selecting clear device only will remove your account from this device, including all messages, contact information, etc. The clear device and network option 
will clear all information about your account from the device as well as the session network, meaning that you cannot restore any messages, contacts, or other information associated with your account. Selecting clear will in effect log you out of your account. Let's do that now. We've now returned to session's onboarding screen. This time, select I have an account. Now enter your recovery password. I am going to reselect fast mode for my notification settings and my account has been fully restored. Let's head back to the main settings menu. Let's select the help option. This section provides a variety of resources which can help you if you run into any issues while you're using Session. If you encounter a bug while you're using Session, you have the option to export your logs and send them to our customer support team. If you speak a language other than English and you would like to help us translate Session, you can tap the link to do that here. You can also provide feedback for the app or check out our FAQ or get in touch with support. Let's head back to the main conversation screen. I want to change my disappearing message settings in my conversation with Tom. To access my settings for this conversation, I'm going to tap Tom's profile picture. This will show several options, but what I'm interested in right now is disappearing messages. So I'm going to select this. You're able to choose between two different types of disappearing message settings. Disappear after read and disappear after send. Let's select disappear after read. This will bring up a secondary menu, which lets you choose the amount of time after the message has been read that it will delete. Once you've sent a message and it's been read, a timer will start that corresponds to your disappearing messages settings. After this, your message will delete from your device, the recipient's device, and the session network. Now we're going to enable calls, so let's head back to the privacy settings. Calls are currently in beta and disabled by default. Calls will expose your IP address to whoever you're calling, as well as a server operated by the foundation that stewards Session. In the future, Session will offer onion routed calls, which completely protects your IP address. Let's press continue. Head back to the conversation screen, select a contact, and start a call by tapping the phone icon in the top right hand corner. Now let's talk about how to block a contact. I'm gonna start off by selecting my contact's profile picture in the top right hand corner. At the bottom of this settings menu, you can see a block this user toggle option. I'm going to turn it on. I'm now going to confirm my decision by selecting block. Within my conversation with Tom, there will now be a red banner which confirms that I've successfully blocked this contact. There is also a red bar on the left hand side of the conversation with this contact, letting me know at a glance who I've blocked. To unblock, simply navigate back into the conversation with the blocked contact and select unblock from the top of the conversation. I'm now going to run through a handy feature called note to self, which allows you to quickly store information in a secure way inside session. From the conversation screen, tap the magnifying glass at the top right hand corner. This will display my contacts list. At the top of my contacts list is an option to write a note to self. I'm going to select that. In effect, I have created a conversation with myself where I can store any information that I might need later. I can also initiate a note to self by copying my account ID, starting a new conversation as I would with anybody else and entering my own account ID. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions that weren't answered by this video, please feel free to reach out to our support team and they'll help you resolve the issue as soon as they can.